Hey guys, Ibontis here. Gonna do my solo guide for the Nightfall this week. We've got Valistaric on the Cerebus Vey 3 strike. Modifiers of Arcburn, Brawler, Fresh Troops, and Ironclad. So, let's get to it. I did bring my... Oh, what's it called? Zahalo Supercell. So, it's the only primary with arc damage, so if you've got it, make sure and bring it along. Otherwise, of course, scout rifles to keep your range on this one are probably gonna be nice. Any arc sniper rifle is going to be really crucial to make sure you can put some solid damage on the boss and the, the tank and quite a few of the enemies so you can keep your range. Also the nice thing here is a couple of the main enemies that you're potentially going to need to put damage into are arc shielded. So that's going to be really helpful as well. Finally we've got any type of arc thing you've got. I've got an arc rocket launcher as well. You could use the arc sword if you don't have the halo. Any arc machine gun. I've got options here, but I'm just going to start with a rocket, so let's get to it. So what you want to do is if you jump on your Sparrow, you're going to have a few enemies fighting it out out here. If you can actually run right through them and come over here, you can deploy your Ghost right at this little panel. And if you can do it fast enough, you may not have to fight that many guys. Now, there could be a few of them in here. If you do, if you run into some, you can take them out pretty quickly, so it's not that big of a deal. Once you do, just come over here. And you can actually drop down in this crevice. And when you turn this corner, make sure you're running and on the move. Because you're going to be facing a couple enemies and especially that Colossus right there on my right. If you can jump by him quickly, then you won't even have to worry about him. He's got rockets, but they're solar. But he's not going to be too bad. So, come up the ramp and then you can really get the strike started. So, it's nice to be able to pass that first part. It's just not necessary. Apparently that, that guy is going to make a cameo in my video this morning with his pink sparrow. And now he's gone. Now, once you get in this room, this is where everything starts, and the modifiers actually take effect. So it looks like we've got a little bit of everything here this morning. And then just be careful, depending on... You're going to have to see what is arc and what is not. It looks like the scions actually are arc, so that can be a little bit painful. Um, you're going to have void snipers up top, as, we, as I do seem to have taken right now, so watch for those. Take those out, and remember, of course, always avoid their... Uh, triple shot as it comes to you. You can usually hear it come around the corner. Now, nice thing about Zahalo is its chaining ability. As you tag enemies, it will actually chain lightning to others when you do damage and get kills from them. Well, that one's beneficial, but be careful as these definitely, I think, are going to be arc on the Scions, so they're just definitely going to be one to watch out for. Again, the nice thing about that chaining effect. Now, somewhere in the middle, you're going to have a Centurion who's going to have those Axiom darts, so you need to make sure and take him out quickly. And, of course, the joys of Arc Sniping. If I can get him before he runs behind his stupid wall, he gets a shield up. And see what I can do for grenade tosses. Now, again, caution is in your sake. Anything with a burn is definitely going to hurt. Um, looks like I've actually got, where is it, got a little ammo crate over here, so look for this one. The heavy one, I'm not quite sure where that one is, it's been a little while since I've seen that one, so look for that one, keep an eye out, make sure you put your put that to use, you may as well, if you've got it there. And then vaporize this guy down. Now don't forget, up top you've got a void sniper, when you take him out, Make sure you dodge his shots. It's probably quicker just to use a sniper rifle, honestly. But if you're going to go for the fun route, you can just use a grenade. Those are fun too. Come on. There we go. Now you're going to have some enemies up around the corner to the left, so it's probably not a horrible idea. Wow, he didn't die. Um, to work your way this direction, honestly, just so you can... Have some high ground, so as you work on to the next section of the fight, you can kind of control that piece of it from a little higher ground than potentially just right at their level. So, drop the drop the blade so you've got a little mobility, and then work your way over here. Now, once you're up here, you should be fairly clear to the to see the door, but you've got some enemies that are going to spawn before. So here, once you get about this far over, you're going to have the enemy spawn. The main thing you need to take out is this Hydra, so you can actually move on to the next section. Obviously an Arc Burn Sniper, really going to be helpful here. So just finish him off. Now, you can see that door actually just went blue, basically means it unlocked. At that point, you just have to kill enough enemies to be able to get through to the other side. Now, as you do have uh, taken Scions, 
Those are, of course, going to be fairly painful. Uh, just due to their arc abilities. So, it's kind of going to be up to you and how much risk you want to put into going forward. This is a point where you do have a checkpoint. Um, actually, it's not even so much a checkpoint as you don't actually have to worry about respawn yet. So, you can go through the section, die, and just respawn and just kind of have the same progress you had before. So, it's really not quite as bad. These guys are going to hurt. I know they are. And some of the guys are just going to keep spawning here. So, if you can run through... There's going to be some Vex, going to be some taken in there, but if you can get by and get past to this section, you should be pretty safe. Not much you've really got to turn around and go for, so you can move on. Now, I've honestly taken my Sparrow from the front entrance all the way to, all the way to this door. They used to be able to do that. Now they changed it to where you actually have to at least take out that one enemy that spawns once you get over there, so it's a little harder to do now. So you can, but now with the Scions and stuff and the burn... It's probably going to be a risky endeavor, so if you take your time, take the guys out, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Alright guys, so once you turn this corner here, we're going to have a couple failings. And those are going to be void weapons, so be careful with those. And then also we're going to have uh, one Centurion around the corner, so watch out for that Axiom Dart. You won't be messing around. Probably going to end up firing two of them at you pretty frequently. And then focus your... Focus that Centurion down as much as you can. Whew. Barely survived that one. If you're taking a little damage, creep back up the ramp. See, and if he feels like getting really frisky with you, well, toss a grenade on him. That'll usually do, do pretty good work to him. And he's done. You can hear that Axiom Bolt hiding around the corner. Somewhere. We got one more round after you take out the first one. Of course, watch the uh, phalanx. They have slug rifles that are arc, so they can be pretty painful. And then, of course, the centurion himself. Not the simplest guy in the world. You can get a nice grenade throw on him. That'll make pretty quick work of him. Just be careful on your health. Seriously, stop spawning. Yeah, that's one way to take it out if you really need to. So, <laughs> gives me a little ammo as well. So, don't keep staying back too far. Apparently, those things will keep respawning, so watch out for that. Now, pick off the hobgoblins from back here. Now, that triple shot does not have the range actually from back here, so you're actually safe at the moment. There's a goblin who's shielding that guy up there, so take it out. That hobgoblin shouldn't be able to barely out of his range. And then you'll just have this yellow hobgoblin back here. Get a nice sniper shot into him, and you'll be done with him. Now, what you've got to do is you've actually got to run up to where that yellow hobgoblin was, activate a console, and then come back down here. I say come back down here. You don't have to, but it's definitely a lot safer if you do. So, come in here. You can actually, if you want to run through, just for later time's sake, detonate all these grenades as you're coming up here. Makes it a little easier. Grab any ammo that drops, and you can just deploy your ghost up here. Now, as soon as it's out of your hand, it means it's actually doing its thing. Jump off here, and get a clean run back to the start. Because you're going to have waves of, it, waves of enemies that spawn, and it's just a little nicer to play that game from back here. Now, a couple things you can do. Probably take out these hobgoblins first, just because it's a little easier that way. Take out this blight. And you're going to have a fair amount of enemies that are arc. Scions, for sure. You're going to have some uh, centurions. Those are also going to be arc. Nice thing is, you've got an option. If you want to have fun, if you're by yourself, it's always a little more fun to do this, too. These are solar, and you can use these if you want to. Now, it's not the most effective, but I want to at least show you guys. You can use them, but you're going to be running up there against arc stuff. Not the most useful thing in the world. So... My advice to you guys, again, keep your distance at whatever you can. Careful of the Scions. You've got one Hobgoblin down here. Watch his shots. Now, for the group of Scions, I'm running a Lightning Grenade right now. That's probably not the best one to run with. If I can run a Pulse Grenade and actually put it down there in the middle of those guys, this will work fairly well. Just got to see if I can get a good shot off. Nice. So, probably have one more Hobgoblin creeping from down below. 
Take a couple of rockets and put them in the middle of those scions. Should get a lot of them. Now, take out this blight and you can come around and use this rock as cover and actually be able to work the rest of them down pretty well. The main ones you want to focus on, there are yellow bar ones, so those are going to hurt even more. Obviously. But be careful there. Now, if you hear the enemies spawning, which it sounds like they are, make sure you get your butt out of dodge real quick. Come back up here and see what's spawned. Now here you can see I've got uh, minotaurs walking to me. A little good old cloakers. They're void. They're not too bad. Or they've got like a solar cannon. So again, neither of those are going to be quite as lethal as obviously anything that's arc. And you'll have a couple waves of these guys. Of course, if you want to kind of defend yourself, you can use that pulse grenade. That can be pretty effective. Watch your health a little bit. And hey, if he wants to keep walking in that grenade, let him. Not gonna argue. Now, there are a lot of scions down there, so I would not advise the whole jump into them style too much. If I can just finish these guys off, it would be nicer. But at some point, you're gonna get more enemies to spawn, so keep your ears peeled for that one. It's pretty much going to happen when you take out the yellow ones. As soon as those go down, you're going to be getting more enemies to spawn. So watch that. Be quick on your sparrow and see what's coming. These guys are going to be closer here. You're going to have a couple of these goblins and hobgoblins. Not too bad. Again, they're mostly void. And down off to your right, you're going to have some as well. So just be ready for those. Goblins, of course, are going to be doing their little shielding methodology. So... Watch out for that. Just be aware that it's coming. And watch their triple shot as well. Now I am playing the ultra cautious route, just so you guys know. You could run up and probably go crazy if you wanted to. But these guys with the slug rifle, I don't typically want to mess with them. They hurt. It's arc. So it's definitely going to hurt, and I'd much rather just survive. So, those guys you can pick off. You can get a nice shot on him. If he's going to warp around, that's fine. Put one in his head, and be done with him. Now, that should be most of it. Once you see the Centurions, you should just have a little bit left to go. Might need to have to toss a grenade there in the middle, see what you've got to do. Looks like we do have a nice little uh, scout sniper up top. Not grounded today, so you can definitely jump out of the way. Forgot about a couple of these snipers, so don't get picked off like I did. It's in your benefit to survive. That one over there, look at his position on that rock. When you get to the next phase, if you have taken, he's going to keep spawning behind you, but it's a very good position to take on the little mini-boss, so just remember that that one's going to spawn behind you, so just be aware that he's potentially going to be there. And probably one or two more of these little guys. I'm alive by the skin on my teeth. And that's four of four. Alright, so now we've got the anomaly. If it is taken, it's going to be a giant minotaur. Otherwise, you have the mini tank that you've probably seen before. Sniper rifle is going to be very beneficial on either one of these. But let's see which one we've got. Nope. If you have the tiny little floating dot out there, just like from the raid and everything else, you're going to be on Taken. So, best way to do that, you can come up here, jump on your Sparrow. It's not going to activate until you actually get on it. So what you want to do is try and find a clean shot for you to get back up the hill. So, one way you can do it, get a nice line, drive straight through it, and then come straight up this ramp. What you want to do is try and get back through the blights that spawn, so if you get shadow touched, you're at least shadow touched farther back. <laughs> now, normally if this is if if this was the uh Oh, what is it? Here's the guy that spawns. I wanted to show him to you guys first. Now down below you're gonna have a giant minotaur. It's pretty easy to see once you spot him. I mean he's cloaked, but he's not that cloaked. <laughs> 
He's going to be hovering typically somewhere right down in that vicinity. If you can put a grenade on him, you'll get some damage. And just look for his head. It's kind of in that big domed region. Somewhere. No, I'll find it eventually. There you go. And just start working him down. Watch behind you. Once you do enough damage, you'll get a hobgoblin to spawn. And then turn around and keep working him down. Now, at a point, he's probably going to get some guys that come up and shield him. So you do have to kind of make note of that. You can see I've got him about half health. I've only put about six or seven shots into him, sniper style. So, again, damage will probably cause the guys to spawn. Some are spawning out there, but the hobgoblin can spawn behind you, so just be careful of that. If he's still down here and actually not... Uh, not going to do much in the way of pra protecting himself. Keep listening. I did get that spawn back behind me. And then if he's down below, you know, throw a grenade on his head if he's close. You can duck down and avoid most of the most of the issue. Now, he ran off over here to the left, so I'm going to try and finish him off. There he goes. Down he falls, and most of the enemies will despawn, so give it just a minute. Not quite as painful of a run through. And then you can jump on your Sparrow. Now, you ha if you have the tank, just so you guys know, uh, just shoot the four little jets that are holding it up, one on each side. His rocket is its slow, but if it gets to you, and it's got a huge blast radius, so just watch that one. Other than that, uh, just snipe it from far away, and you guys should be all right on that one, too. You don't even have to worry about the little ho hobgoblin spawning on that one. Just make sure you don't die to his giant rocket blast. And once you're done with that, you can come around here. Now, there's two ways you can handle this next little mini section to get into the final rooms. Uh, one, you can drive straight through it, which I'll show you guys. The other one, of course, take your time and pick them off from a distance. They're mostly going to be solar, so you shouldn't have too much to worry about. But in the event you actually do have some issues, you can also try the drive through method. This one saves a little bit of time, so just watch here and I'll show you. So the best thing to do is come up the ramp. You're going to want to kind of aim yourself at this little mini hill, and then when you see this piece right here, try and you to turn up it, and then swing it around, and you can jump off, so you don't die by everything else. Nothing in there is actually going to be too bad, because if you check the level on these guys, they're 15. So they're not even going to hurt that much. So you're not really in like a burn section, this is just kind of a mini open section. If you do actually get some random ammo drops, that's always nice. <laughs> but you can drive through most of that section. There's a Colossus down there, there's some other guys. Nothing too major out in this vicinity. Or some taken since this is fresh troops, but nothing too bad. And then work your way up here to the top. Now I'm gonna pop a synth, but I'm actually gonna wait and see if I get one. Normally I would be popping a synth, I should say. We've got taken, so make sure you check out what tortured things are gonna be up here. Got some vandals apparently bringing in some fallen, fallen help. I like to come over here to the upper ground first, just because you shouldn't have too many guys, and you can at least get a vantage point of what's down below. Now you're going to have some taken for sure, some scions. But if you can take them out, before they even notice you, hey, save yourself a little effort. Grab my ammo, watch the scions, of course, those are still going to be arc. Pick off what you can. And then down here to your right, you're going to have some enemies as well. So make sure you don't forget about them. Because they're likely to be the Scions and they're going to hurt. Now you can safely attack them if you're worried about trying to be seen. Check them from over here. Not too shabby. The burn helps, guys. You can melt a lot of things and Zahalo basically is kind of the key to most of that. Nice thing is, once you get through here, you shouldn't have much in the way of taken left, actually. Should be fairly done with those once we get to the boss room, because you might have one or two enemies in there, but the boss room is definitely guaranteed to be 100% cabal. Nothing else. Got a phalanx over here. Now, his slug rifle is definitely arc, so be careful of that guy. He's going to hurt. If he's firing at you, make sure you're at pretty full health. Finally, what you want to do, potentially there can be an ammo box in a couple places. I've seen heavy down here, uh, special up above. Just look and see if you're lucky enough to get any of those. And I think I'm pretty well wrapped on this one. Check if there's any more ammo. Guess not. All right. Moving on around the corner. 
Now, before you actually run in here, make sure you're fully loaded. Now, what you're really going to want to do to the boss is snipe him. And I'll show you guys some safe places to do that. Looks like we do have a little bit more taken here left. So fast you can kill that Centurion because he's also got a slug rifle, so you want him down quickly. And then we've got a few Scions out in the middle. Once you kill the Scions, you are going to kick the boss fight off. So, if you haven't been here before, he comes from that door, and you can see it opening now. Now, unfortunately, you can't shoot him for a little while, so don't waste your good ammo until you actually know for sure that you can damage him. You're going to hear him walk out, and there's going to be a few extra enemies that spawn at the same time. You can take your time, actually. If you wait a little bit, and don't let him see you, then when you finally do, you should be able to damage him, and actually put full damage into him. Because for a little while there, you won't be able to damage him at all, which is rather frustrating. Then if you're going to switch back and forth, watch his minigun. Hurts like hell. And if you trade back and forth, you'll get a few shots into him. At some point, he's going to start firing rockets. Now, this is a good time to put a decent amount of damage into him when you can. And again, switching back and forth helps. Now, once you get enough shots into him and you're also getting to a point where you know sniper ammo may be an issue whatever it is uh, come up to a relatively safe spot and I'm going to show you a few places where you can fight him from one throw a grenade on him while you can makes life a little easier get a little extra damage now this ramp over here that I'm on you can jump and slide down this wall in the top side and you can sit behind here for most of the fight and do what you need to do now is this the fun way to do the fight not so much obviously you're stuck in a little box but it's a safe way to do the fight, and you can manage a lot of what you need to, kind of at your pace. Again, watch the failings. Those are going to be a little more on the painful side. And if you feel like you're getting in a tough spot, of course, run around jump back down here. Now, I've got my super. Of course, I can use that. I tend not to in case it's a really precarious situation. But yeah, I'll try and pick off the enemies. They're going to keep coming. There's not much you can do about that. And even hanging back here, you can only do so much to them. Now, potentially I can get a couple rockets if these guys aren't standing in my way. Now, his rockets can hit you down here. But if you're loaded to the gills with rocket ammo like I seem to be right now... Put some ammo into him, but it's much better to use your sniper rifle just because it hits harder, a little more direct. And once you get enough damage into him, you'll be able to get the next wave of enemies to spawn. Watch those failings, but here is your time to put your shots on him. You can kind of pick your pick your walls. He's going to be far away. And just keep putting some shots into him. Once you get him into about half health, he'll start working his way back across the map, and you'll know that when it happens. Watch the rockets. Those hurt. Nothing you can do, but those definitely hurt. Now, it looks like he is definitely coming back across the map. So I'm going to get back in my little hidey hole and let him get to his side. Now, he's going to come over here, and you can do a fair amount of damage to him, actually, from this box. As I said, not the most fun, but definitely a functional little box here. So. You can do a lot from right back in here. You can use this little separation of the boxes. Now, his minigun can fire through here and hit you. I don't think you're invincible. But you can actually get a lot done from back here. Especially when some of those guys walk in front of you. Might be time to just throw a little grenade down. See what happens. Now, as I said, the minigun definitely going to make it through here. But if you're at a decent angle, you should be able to dodge some of the shots from it. And then once you get enough damage into him, he's going to go wandering off. Which makes this last part a little annoying. Watch the enemies. Take those out. Now, as he starts to move around the map, it's going to be a little harder for you to uh, stay in the box the whole time. He's going to wander to places where you really can't shoot him from back here. So I'm going to pop a special ammo scent. I think I probably should have good on time. Now, see what you've got for enemy spawns. Got phalanx up here. Got some rockets. And kind of your next thing you want to do is just look for him. Now, I took a huge chunk of damage there, so for safety's sake, come back down in here and run to the edge. Now, if you can find him in the middle, 
That works really well, but if not, then I play the little risky game here. And sometimes you can get a shot on him like this over here. Al. Depends on what, what what he's gonna let you do. Probably shouldn't have wasted my sniper shots on the phalanx there, but oh well, got the guy out of my way. Now I'm getting some decent damage into him. I have not popped a three of coins. I always try and do that to remind you guys. And remind myself. I'll take it when I can get it. But yeah, I can honestly say normally he's not sitting back here in this box to where he can fire at him. If he is, hey, take advantage of it. But he tends to wander just like that. He wanders away. Now sometimes he'll wander back. But if you're going to use this as a time to grab some ammo, throw a grenade at him. Come back in the box, and you can actually even slide down in here if you're really tight. Again, watch the phalanx. Any of these little ads, they can just take you down as you're working on the boss. Make your day a little less fun. You know, the boss is really going to stare at you right there. You can take a ton of damage, but put some damage into him. Watch those rockets that can come through the box. I usually actually don't see him be this aggressive, so... If you're not getting him to pop up like I am, Al, that wasn't smart. Ah, too much health. Too much health done. All right, still seems to be sitting out there somewhere. Nope, told you, wandered off again. Well, this is just a safe part of the room. There's another place up on a chandelier you can actually go sit on, but it's kind of up to you guys if you want to try and get up there. Now, if you stay in hiding long enough, well, you can get him to turn his back. And, hey, I got some drops. See if I got anything good out of him. I got a legendary. I got treads upon stars. I'll take that. See if it's any good. And that's a wrap, guys. Honestly, arc on this one, it's pretty manageable just due to the fact that you're not dealing with solar. Solar for Cabal, pain in the butt. Arc, not so bad. So, enjoy the decency that they were nice enough to not kill you on the modifiers this week. And we'll go on. As always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, let's see what we get for uh, rewards. Uh, check out the main channel. I've got my weekly resets. Zero, of course, as always, covering Division. Going to start covering some Overwatch stuff and trying to put that up there. So subscribe there. Always appreciate the support. Likes on these videos are really appreciated. And let's see what we get. Anything good? Anything good? Nope. Probably not. I keep. I have my fair share of these. Deal breakers, antipodal hindsights, all of these little auto rifles. But oh well. Motion tracker and effective range. Could be worse on the range, but oh well. Again, thanks to, for tuning in, guys. I always appreciate the support. If you guys have any questions, comments, different strategies, leave those down below. I'll answer those as soon as I can get to them. Other than that, as I said, I will be out of town next week, so I'm just kind of dropping this at the end so you guys know not to expect these next week. I'll be on vacation in the Caribbean. So, yeah, tough life, I know. But enjoy. Have a good week, guys, and I'll get Challenge of Elders up next. So... Have a good morning.